Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. The base done, I can start on the walls. I looked at getting wooden windows for this and I thought about making my own, but cost and time were big considerations, so I ended up just buying these UPVC ones. I wanted double glazing because I wanted to keep the workshop warm and the noise down for the neighbours. To make these easy to install later, I'm making some surrounds for them now. This is made out of some treated 2x8 material. I just cut it down slightly bigger than the window, so you've probably got about a millimetre to spare all round. And then I can drill some pilot holes and glue and screw it all together. The upright pieces for the stud work all need to be the same length so I've got lots to cut down. I could set up a stop block on the mitre saw but it would only be a stop to cut the waste bit off. What I mean by that is you want the piece you actually want to be between the stop block and the blade so they're always a consistent length. If I set it up so the waste bit is between the stop block and the blade then if the timbers are a different length to start with what's left over will be a different length. I hope you understand what I mean, because I'm not sure I did at the end. But anyway, what I did was cut one timber to the length I wanted and then use it as a template to mark out all the others. So while I've got these window surrounds on the bench, I can then make the framework to go around them. I'm putting all the stud work together with these 100mm screws. They've got a self-drilling point so you don't really need to worry about splitting the wood. I've been given this oak door a few years ago, so I moved with it, thinking I can use it on this build. I'm doing exactly the same as the windows, and making the surround for it now. My plan is that doing this now when I've got it on a bench is much easier, and later on everything can just slide into place. The door was unfortunately too tall, so I'm cutting off an equal amount on the top and the bottom. With the frame around the door, clearance all round, I can then cut down some more treated timber to make the jams for the door. This is just my preferred way of working. If I've got the physical object, i.e. the door, I'd rather lay it down and make the frame for it, instead of later on when I'm over at the workshop base, doing the stud work and having to measure the door. If I've got the door there and I'm making it around it, I know it's going to fit. I give it a quick sand down as there's a few rough pieces on this timber and some markings on it. I'm doing this because I want to paint the whole of the workshop. I thought it would be easier to paint the frames for the windows and the doors when there's no windows or doors in them. I don't have to worry about masking anything up or cutting in. I eventually want to paint the whole workshop but that might have to wait until next spring when everything's dried out and I might even look at spraying it. All the sides are going to be sheathed with the OSB. I know how tall it needs to be so I'm going to pile them all up and cut them in one go. Well maybe not all of them in one go but certainly get a few done at a time. With them cut, I can lay them out on the workshop base and use them as a template for my wall. I can start laying out my timbers. I'm going for 2x3s so I can get 50mm insulation in the walls. I wanted as much insulation as possible, but also I want as much space in the shop as possible. Also, using 2x3s opposed to 2x4s saves quite a bit of money. At the end I've got laid out and you can see I've got an extra 2x3 there and that's representing where the end wall will go. So the side walls are the full length of the workshop minus one 2x3 at each end which will be the end walls. And 
Another advantage of laying out the OSB like this first is you can see where all the joints are. I put my 2x3 in place so it's on the joint. Now you can sit down and work this out where everything needs to be, but I just much prefer just having it laid out and doing it. If I can eliminate the need to think on a project, I always will. With all the framing for the wall done, now I need to attach the OSB to it. I want the OSB on the sides to overhang the width of the end walls. When it all goes up, you'll see how that works. So I'm clamping on a 2x3 and a bit of OSB to act as a representation of the end walls, and then I can flip it over. I know I said I like to avoid thinking on a project, but sometimes I might be better off if I did a little more thinking. See if you can spot my deliberate mistake here. Anyway, so after I've flipped my clamps around the other way, I can go along and whack some nails in. These are ring shank nails, so they're really hard to pull back out. You don't need a nailer to do this. You could nail in by hand or even screw, but it really speeds things up. So that was the back wall, and that was the simplest one. I then do the front one, which is pretty much exactly the same, but it has the bits of stud work I did for around the windows and the doors also. I get the OSB on in exactly the same way, and that is the side walls done. Next time we'll get the end walls done. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe for more videos.